Hey, what is up everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So over the past couple of days, there's been a lot of things happening in the scene. And the first one that I wanted to call out is, is that we now have K-Stuff support for PS5 firmware version 9.05. Now, this was brought to us by the GOAT Echo Stretch, and he has stated here that we now have full support available for firmwares 3.00 all the way through 9.60. A huge thanks to all of these people that was involved. And if you're wondering why is this firmware so important, that is because this is a shipped firmware version. So we've got a lot of people that have been sitting there waiting at 9.05 that did not want to update to 9.60, for example, or another firmware where K-Stuff already has support. But it is very nice to have firmware support now for versions 3.00 through 9.60. Now with this new version of K-Stuff being added, we obviously start to see this trickle down the line here. So we can see that the other project that Echo Stretch maintains is case stuff toggle and what this does is this allows you to boost your homebrew game performance by disabling case stuff after launching a game now this is built into eta hen and if we go over here to the releases you will see that case stuff toggle 0.4 beta added in 9.05 support now if you're wondering if eta hen includes this or has support for this Yes, they do, but again, not on the official webpage yet because it hasn't been released. Again, if you join the Discord server PKG Zone and go into ETA Hen Public Test and go to the pinned messages here, you will see that there is a brand new version that just came out, and this one still expires on November the 25th, but it does add case of support for 9.05 as well as that K-Stuff Paul support for 9.05 mentioned right here, which is the K-Stuff toggle. Now again, with K-Stuff 9.05 support, we could see over on the official Y2JB project that they also went ahead and accepted a pull request from Echo Stretch, which added the 9.05 DLSYM offset. And if we go over here to the issue tracker, it was merged, but then the author here, Gagina, said that Y2JB auto calculates this for 8, 9, and 10.x, but they just went ahead and merged it anyway. Now, there hasn't been any other update on Y2JB since I last covered it right at five days ago. We are still setting on version 1.21, which had the embedded YouTube update blocker. Now, that blocker was put in place to get rid of this message that some people saw while using Y2JB, but 99% of the time it was because a proxy wasn't set up properly before launching the YouTube application. Now with Y2JB, also there is its PLK, and you'll see that they also just merged in a commit which added that 9.05 offset that was missing. If we go over here to the releases, we can see that version 0.3 came out right at two days ago. And if we look at the change log here, you can see that there was an added notification command displayed JS error in the notification, and that there was also a custom app icon. And right there is what that icon now looks like. And yeah, that was pretty much it. Now, in order to update to this latest version, all you really need to do is download this Y2JB update.zip pending that you've already got the previous one installed. And of course, I do have a video showing you exactly how to do that. Now we'll go ahead and connect a USB drive. I'm using the same exact one that I used for the PS5 autoloader here. And then just go ahead and paste in that file. And it's just gonna be called y2jb underscore update dot zip. And now plug that into your PlayStation 5. Okay, over on my PlayStation 5, I'm not jailbroken or anything like that. We are going to run the Y2JB application. Now this one, I already have its PLK installed. So this time, if we run it with our USB drive connected, we should get an update here. So we can see the auto loader is running. And there it goes. It says starting extraction. 
and there we go. It is automatically updating it. How freaking cool is that? So that is going to be a much easier process here in the future on getting our systems updated. It's just simply copying a file to a USB drive. Next up is Netflix and Hack, which is again another user land exploit that currently works on the PlayStation 5, and this uses a man-in-the-middle attack. Now, we can see that down in the readme here that it says that Netflix and Hack injects custom JavaScript into the Netflix PS5 Air screen by intercepting Netflix's request to localhost. Now, this does work on PS5 firmware version 4.03, all the way to 12.x. And I saw an update over here on Discord where the author here stated, Netflix and hack status update. We have a full user land plus laps plus elf loader for Netflix and hacks. Once you get the proper version of Netflix installed, I've set up a server at this IP address and this port number. And then of course, thanks to all of the testers and those that made this happen. Now on the project page underneath releases, I actually have a video where I covered how to get set up with this. And in our instance, we just used a system backup, but you can use an M.2 drive if you would like to. Now, I will link this full video here in case you want to go ahead and get set up with this, but there's still a few remaining pieces that we do need to go ahead and get added to the repo before we've got a full exploit working. That brings us to yet another user land exploit, and this one is called YARP, which is yet another RenPy PlayStation exploit we can see that we've had a number of different releases and one that just came out, which was eight hours ago, version 3.2.0. We can see over on Discord that the author stated that this update adds the auto load feature and now you can automatically load a Python script and or ELF and bin files. So basically we have a complete jailbreak that is fully functioning now at this point if you want to go ahead and start taking advantage of yarp now there was this post from a couple of days ago from this user and they stated new version new test and this was version 3.1.1 and on a ps5 firmware 10.01 they did get debug settings unlocked via yarp and we can see right here in this video that is where they go ahead and load it and right there you can see it is now listening on that port number for the stage two payload and they've sent the payload and right there received payload and now it is executing get arbitrary kernel read write host exploitation and now it says payload executed successfully and there we go we've got debug settings working just right there that is so cool now keep in mind that this only has two supported games here, A Year of Springs, as well as Arcade Spirits. Now I do have yet another video walking you through this step by step. And in this instance, I'll walk you through setting this up using Arcade Spirits. Now I don't have my physical version in the mail yet because I have to import it in. But as soon as I get the physical disc, then I will release another video on this. But if you just wanna see what the process is, you can check this one out and probably learn a lot in the meantime. Next up, we have a, another project that is called No Control, and this is a proof of concept for PS5 kernel vulnerability in the FCH2H control syscall. Now, if you're wondering what this is, this obviously relates to the Flow's HackerOne report, which is where they state that this could cause a kernel stack free in the syscall here. But over on the project page, it does state right now that this is not useful right now, but this would be a kernel exploit for the PlayStation 5 up to 10.40. So we could possibly get debug settings on at least up to a 10.40 because right now we do not have case stuff past 9.60. 
So this is a project that I will be keeping my eye on, but I wanted everybody to be aware of that. Next up, we do have another release over here from Echo Stretch, which is the PS5 app dumper. And this is now at version 1.07 beta. And they state here in the release notes, it says updated to support PS4 apps. Backport only works on PS5 apps currently. And then there are some things in here to those that originally provided a reference. Now, currently, if you are looking to dump a PlayStation 5 game and automatically decrypt the files, this is pretty much the go-to application right now. Things are cooking in the scene right now. And the very last thing that I'm going to leave you with is, is all the brand new PlayStation 5 games that have recently come out. So, yeah, you can look through this list here and you can see all kinds of games that have recently come out. And it's super neat to see some of these VR games or VR2 games starting to drop. Anyways, thank you so very much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Michael.